In the 19th century, women began organizing conventions all over the country, sharing stories and giving speeches that rallied people to action. So what were they saying in these speeches? Well, what if I told you that you already know one of these speeches? And then what would you say if I told you that what you know about that speech is wrong? Today we're going to talk about one of the most iconic and misunderstood speeches in American history. It happened in Akron, Ohio on May 29th, 1851, and it's the famous Ain't I a Woman speech by Sojourner Truth. Did you learn about Sojourner Truth in high school or college? If so, watch to the end of this video and then tell me in the comments something that you learned correctly and something that you learned incorrectly and why it matters. Sojourner Truth, originally named Isabella Baumfrey, was born to an enslaved family in 1797 in Dutch-speaking Ulster County, New York. So just stop right there. Did you know that people were still speaking exclusively Dutch in New York in the late 18th century? And more importantly, did you know that the slave trade continued in New York until 1827? Little Isabella, or Belle as she was called, was raised with her parents and siblings in Ulster County, New York, until the man who owned their family died in 1805. At that point, at the age of nine, she was sold to a new owner for a hundred dollars and a flock of sheep. Little Belle spoke only Dutch, and her new owner beat her every day, often because she didn't understand English. At the age of 12, she was sold again, and at the age of 14, she was sold yet again. This last human trafficker frequently raped the women he enslaved, and Belle was no exception. She became pregnant as a teenager and bore a child by this man. Over the course of the next several years, Belle had four more children with an enslaved man named Thomas. In 1826, she took her baby Sophia and made the treacherous journey to freedom, running to an abolitionist family named the Van Wagoners. The family bought her freedom for $20 and then helped her rescue her son, Peter, who had been illegally sold to a plantation in Alabama. Belle filed a lawsuit against the slave traders and got Peter back, becoming one of the first black women to go to court against a white man and win the case. It was during this time that Isabella Baumfrey had a religious experience that was so transformative that she changed her name to Sojourner Truth. She chose the name because she said she heard the Spirit of God telling her to preach the truth. So she began speaking out against the evils of slavery. By the early 1830s, she participated in the religious revivals that were sweeping the state and became a charismatic speaker. In 1850, William Lloyd Garrison privately published her book the narrative of Sojourner Truth, a Northern slave. With the proceeds from her book sales, she paid off the mortgage on a home and owned it outright. And in 1851, Truth joined a lecture tour through New York, speaking about slavery and women's rights. In May, she attended the Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. Now, imagine Sojourner Truth, after all that she had been through in her life, sitting in the audience at the convention try to hear the speeches through her ears. The opening remarks were given by Frances Barker Gage, who was the head of the convention. Gage said, are not the natural wants and emotions of humanity shared equally by both sexes? Does man's heart thrill with a deeper pleasure in doing good? Can his soul writhe in more bitter agony under the consciousness of evil or wrong? Is the sunshine more glorious, the perfume of flowers more exquisite to his senses than to hers? To all these, everyone will answer no. After Gage's talk, statistics were read on income inequality. At the time, women were discouraged from working outside of the home, but when they did, their pay was abysmally low. Female teachers in Ohio, for example, were paid $21 a year, half the salary of their male counterparts. Next came a message from Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Stanton argued that girls and women should be educated and prepared for careers because they were smart and capable, not the frail and dependent beings that they were portrayed as. Now, in my opinion, all of these arguments are completely valid. The laws of coverture and the Victorian cult of domesticity had placed women in a cage of the private sphere, treating them as the delicate angels in the house. At least that's how society treated white women. 
On day two of the conference, Sojourner Truth took the pulpit and called out the fact that when women had been talking about the plight of women, they were really only talking about rich white women. She pointed out that she was as muscular and strong as any man. She had to be. Her speech didn't mention the wage gap, but Sojourner Truth and her family had not worked for half of a white man's pay. They had worked for no pay. And was she not a woman? Now, I'm guessing that you've already learned some new information today, but I haven't even gotten to the big reveal yet. First, let's watch the brilliant Kerry Washington delivering a portion of Sojourner Truth's speech. That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages, and lifted over ditches, and to have the best place everywhere. <laughs> Nobody ever helps me into carriages, <laughs> or over mud puddles, or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as any man when I could get it. And I could bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? These words are inspiring, and Kerry Washington delivers them powerfully. But did Sojourner Truth really speak those words? Let's hear from Dr. Raina Clay McKay to discuss the authenticity of the speech. It is super important to note that it was 12 years after Sojourner Truth gave this speech that Frances Barker Gage, a white woman, who was in charge of the African Women's Convention, super important, then chose to take this speech, completely change the dialect and the words, and publish it. Why does it matter? Why is it a big deal? When you erase somebody's voice, um, you erase not only them as an individual, their words, their power, but the context and the, historic, the history behind it, right? In that way, Francis Grage was in a very small way, but in a very large way, also erasing the history of the slave trade in the North. I was very much so taught in school. The slavery, slavery happened in the South. It was only in the South. It was only my family who would tell me, no, that's not how it worked. But it's true. Like, we had slavery all across the country, from the west, to the south, to the north. And if we don't acknowledge that, then we're never going to move on beyond it. A really good point, and it's a sensitive point, but I think it is needs to be brought up, is that by also changing a very educated woman's dialect into a slave dialect, uh, Francis Gage reduced Sojourner Truth to an uneducated slave and elevated herself. That's white supremacy in a nutshell for him. The fact that it happens today, routinely, shows that it is a well-worn, well-tried, and um, successful method. Thank you so much, Raina. Thankfully, through Dr. Nell Ivan Porter's work and the Sojourner Truth Project, we can hear a closer approximation to Sojourner Truth's real speech. Truth's actual accent has been lost to time, but the Sojourner Truth Project offers a few different readings that give us an idea of what she might have actually sounded like. My favorite is from an artist named S.T., and we'll wrap up today's episode with her rendition of the speech. May I say a few words? I want to say a few words about this matter. I am a woman's right. I have as much muscle as any man and I can do as much work as any man. I have plowed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed. And can any man do better than that? I have heard much about the sexes being equal. I can carry as much as any man and I can eat as much too if I can get it. I am as strong as any man that is today. As for intellect, 
All I can say is if a woman have a pint and a man a quart, why can't she have her little pint full? You need not be afraid to give us our rights for fear we will take too much, for we can't take much more than our pint will hold. The poor men seem to be all in confusion and they don't know what to do. Why, children, if you have woman's rights, give it to her and you will feel better. You have your own rights and there won't be so much trouble. I can't read, but I can hear. And I have heard the Bible and learned that Eve caused man to sin. But if woman upset the world, to give her a chance to set it right side up again. Sojourner Truth was a hero, and she deserves to be heard in her own voice. And she had a major role beyond her speech. At this point in history, white women and black men were both fighting hard for the right to vote. And it's about to get ugly. Join us for more of the story next time on Breaking Down Patriarchy. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned something new about Sojourner Truth today, make sure to tell me below in the comments. And then don't forget to like, subscribe, and then forward this episode onto somebody else. Thanks so much.